Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Monkey Ranch. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. This is going to be a video that shouldn't take too long for you guys, but it's going to be multiple days for me because we are working on a machine with a serious problem, I believe. So before we get started, I want to thank those of you that came to my live stream this morning and that watched the live stream here in the coming weeks. It explains a whole lot about what's going on with the channel, the changes that are being made, those kinds of things. So if you haven't seen it, go back, check a look at the live stream. Make sure you give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, today, we're going to be working on a machine that I originally did a video for already. It should be posted on the channel by now. Uh, it was supposed to be a simple, basic video. I got a hold of this mower. When you start it, it smokes. And nine times out of ten, when you get a mower that smokes, it has too much oil in it. And in this case... The man that brought this to me had just purchased another mower from me because he thought this one was shot. And uh, he brought it to me to make a video on and see if I could fix it. So I was going to make a quick video. He told me he did recently change the oil. I checked the oil level and it was way high. So I was going to show on camera if that's the case, you remove some of the oil, bring the level back down where it's supposed to be, and after a few minutes, it should stop smoking. That's 90% of the time why your lawnmower smokes it wasn't the case so today I guess we're gonna be working on this it says black max which Walmart sells black max again these bodies are all stamped out at the same factory they're just painted different colors it's got a standard Briggs mower motor on it and uh, this thing is smoking it's making a lot of knocking sounds and I think what's going on is that it has a blown head gasket and what other kind of damage gets done in there once the head gasket blows um, you just never know it could have loose valves could be a lot of things so I spoke to the owner little video I posted it to the channel and I sent him a link it's easier to show them a quick video of what's going on with their machine in some cases than it would be to try and explain it to them via text or on the telephone. When you don't work on machines, it's difficult to kind of picture one in your head and then picture what might be going on. So anyway, I spoke to him and he said, yeah, you know what, go ahead and fix it. Uh, he's willing to pay for it to have it fixed, which is nice because that means I don't have to pay for it just to make you guys video content. I'm not a sponsored channel. Uh, make sure you don't skip the ads when you see them. That's how I make money and Subscribe tell your friends. So in this case, I'm lucky the owners willing to pay to have it fixed and uh, We're gonna rip it apart here first thing and see if we can look at the head gasket and find out if it's blown Now, <clears throat> I'm eventually, if this thing is salvageable, going to have to do more than just take off the fuel tank and the top cover and the carburetor. But you saw how easy that was. Now on this particular head, on the front here we have the valves, we also have the muffler. I believe and it's been a long time since I've had to deal with a head on one of these things, that I can just remove the head and the valves and the muffler will come with it. Also, the spark plug is screwed into the head. So what I'm going to attempt to do before trying to take extra stuff apart is go ahead and remove the head. In this case, on this machine, there's only four bolts. Now... I've been having some migraines the last couple of days. My head is not working correctly, so I'm working on autopilot. Something tells me I'm going to have to take this valve cover off, but for the moment, I just want to see what the head looks like. So if I pull these four bolts, and they're all the same length, 
double check yours to make sure they're all the same length. My head is already free. My valves are still intact. My muffler still intact. And all that's connected here or all that's showing out of here, these are my push rods. Now, on a riding mower, you have to worry a little bit more about the push rods. But on a little push mower like this, this is not self-propelled, this is nothing fancy. On a little machine like this, I don't worry about the push rods. All I want to do when I pull them out, they pull just straight out, they're just push rods, that's literally what they do. They get pushed from inside of the mower like this and they work the valves. Is I'm gonna take them out and see if I see a physical difference in length. There's no difference in length and I don't see much of a difference in color. There is a difference in color. Sometimes you'll get one that's silver and sometimes you'll get one that's a darker color. The silver is usually the intake it's uh, made out of aluminum and if they're hollow like on a big riding mower that makes a difference because the aluminum push rod big and hollow as big as my pinky finger sometimes has to be put on the intake side because it doesn't get as hot as the exhaust so they usually put the harder metal on the exhaust and the softer metal on the intake but I can tell you right now I really now that I've wiped them off do not see a difference in color they are both solid rods. They are not hollow. So it does not matter where they go back in. Now I see wear spots right here on the end that are maybe a quarter of an inch long. And that tells me that that's the end that's been sitting inside of the head against the, uh, the rocker arms. But other than that, it doesn't particularly matter. Neither one of them are bent. When I stick them together and roll them in my hand, neither one of them is bent or bowed. They're both in good condition, so we're just going to get those up and put them out of the way. And what I'm looking for here is the head gasket. And unfortunately, in this case, the head gasket is completely intact. And I was hoping that the head gasket would be blown and that that, my friends, would be the issue and that we could change this head gasket with a new one and stop the, the smoking bypass and everything else that's going on with this thing. Now, unfortunately, this is completely intact. I will watch the film when I took it off to know how it comes on because there's two sides to it, uh, but it's pretty easy to see that this is good, it's intact. It's in one piece, nothing is blown out. Um, there is a whole lot of, well, there's a little bit of stuff here. Doesn't feel like it's pitting it, it just looks like it's remnants. When you put your head gasket on and you squeeze it in there with as much torque, uh, bits of it get hot on there and they kind of stick to it. So that doesn't look damaged at all. I'm going to turn, the piston has some carbon on it, uh, it looks more like, it's not even carbon, carbon is hard, carbon you have to use a wire brush or a wire wheel to get off of there, this is more oil, because it's pretty much wiping off. What I'm going to do now is spin the motor by hand. There's no way for it to start. The spark plugs out. The head is off. There's no compression. Ah. Well, there's your problem, maybe. Let's see what it looks like when I wipe it out. What I'm doing now is just wiping the dirt out of it. Spinning it back. It had dirt and oil in there. Yeah. There's your problem. Um, well, it's one of those unfortunate situations. On a lawnmower that is worth, a mower like this is a little nicer of a push mower than the last ones, the last two I worked on on my channel. Um, one was for a customer and one was for one I found on the side of the road. I sold that for 60 bucks. 
the wheels did not adjust. It was a smaller deck. It was a 20 inch cut with a smaller motor on it. Um, this one is still not self propelled. It's on a nicer body, nicer wheels, a little bit nicer motor. This one might sell for a hundred bucks. Uh, you're not going to get much more than that out of it. It's in good shape. It could be shined up. So maybe a hundred bucks if it was in good shape. Um, let me let me get the camera. Let me let me change the angle here and see if I can get the camera over here to show you what I'm looking at. Unfortunately, when you have a mower that's in good condition and it's only worth a hundred bucks. Doing the kind of work that is necessary to get this one to run again is just not something that you're going to do. All right. This is a new camera. It's got the uh, anti-shake stuff. So hopefully you can see this. There's the inside of the piston right there. And you can see, hopefully on camera, this whole portion right here is scored. Uh, I can feel it. It's like sandpaper in there. It's got grooves all scored into it. You can see the difference between the left of the screen here, how that's all scored, and how this is nice and smooth. And if I come over to the other side as well, hopefully you can see that it's scored on this side from about here where my fingernail is down to about there. It's scored at the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock position. And what happens there is... Let me put this back on the tripod. So basically what we have going on here is a couple of things. One, and the easiest thing that possibly could have been doing, is that it had an oil leak. And the oil leaked out to the point where there wasn't enough oil in there to keep everything nice and cool. This is an air-cooled, uh, oil-cooled machine. It doesn't have an oil pump. It just kind of splashes up in through there. And the oil level probably got low. So the machine just got overheated. It just got hot. And when that happens, when there's nothing in there to keep that piston cool, it will swell and it will score and scratch the outside of the piston wall. And then as soon as it cools off, it'll shrink back down where it's supposed to be. But now the piston rings are worn out and there's all kinds of scoring in the wall, the sleeve where the piston goes in and out. And what happens there is it allows oil, every time the piston goes backwards, oil is, or fuel is put up there and the fuel burns off. Well, oil is coming from the backside as well, so it's dragging oil with it, and that's why it's smoking. Oil is coming out past the rings on the piston, burning up on every explosion of fuel, and it's being sent out. Normally, it would be sent out either the muffler, or in our case, it's the carburetor, and that's why the filter was so full of oil and crap. Uh, I have no idea the history on this machine, he says it's only two years old. There's two ways it could happen. One, it could have sucked sand in. We live in Florida. There's sand everywhere. That's what That's what everything's made of, sand here in Florida. We don't have dirt or clay. We have sand. So either he sucked in some sand because the air filter was not on it, and it got sucked in through the carburetor and made it into the piston, which I highly doubt because sand would have blocked the carburetor and basically made it not run. Or it ran out of oil and there was nothing to cool it. The piston swelled, the ring scored the, the jug and uh, there, there's no saving it. You would need an engine block, uh, a new block in there in order to fix it. And considering I find mowers on the side of the road all the time these mowers have uh, three, sometimes four bolts, and they just unbolt from the deck, lift off. You can put any mower motor on any mower, uh, pretty much. They're almost all interchangeable. This one's not worth fixing. It's not a head gasket situation. It's not loose valves. It is a scored piston from overheating, and uh, 
I hope this helps somebody. If you pull your head off and your gasket is in good shape, which is what I thought this problem was going to be. I really thought the head gasket blew and uh, that was where the noise and the lack of compression was coming from and that's why it was sounding funky and without a head gasket there uh, fuel and oil would be uh, all of it doesn't get exploded that's why you have a rebreather hose in the first place if, for those of you that wonder why, why there's a hose that goes on the back of your carburetor this is the one that goes on the back of the carburetor cover there it's because whatever fuel and, and oil does not get burned during each explosion, it goes right back through there, back into the carburetor to be burned a second time. That's how they help with emissions pollution, so that stuff's being burned up and not just squirted into the, the air. I don't know why that makes a difference, but it does. Um, it's unfortunate. This one is not worth fixing. It happens from time to time. Not, not very often. So if you pull it apart and you find that your head gasket is intact and you see scoring inside of your piston, you pretty much know. Now, if you want it to go to all the trouble to attempt, and like I said, he bought another one for me for 60 bucks. You can buy one of those for 75, 80 bucks. You could spend more than that on parts and you can hone out the cylinder. I have a little uh, cylinder hone that goes in a drill and that kind of opens up with centrifugal force. So I could uh, I could take that and hone that out and I could get oversized piston rings and put oversized piston rings on it and bring this thing back to life. But it would take me several hours to do so. It would cost me money and parts on something you can replace for 75 bucks these days. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I do my best to answer. If you haven't yet already, subscribe, hit the like button, it's somewhere between my chin and my balls, and I'll see you soon.